folks and a warm welcome back to my channel uh, in this video I'm going to be looking at my thoughts on these Scarpa Ribolet light boots that I've now had for two years when I first got them I did a, a an initial video of my first thoughts like a, a new boot day and very exciting those days are too um, but I've now had the opportunity to try them out across the whole spectrum of conditions that we typically get here in the UK from um, the middle of winter to the middle of summer and uh, I'm in a, a much better position now to give you some of my thoughts on uh, how the boots perform and, and what I think about them. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in these boots then um, hopefully you'll find this interesting. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So the boots are uh, marketed by Scarpa as uh, tough trekking boots suitable for uh, mountain walking, hill walking, um, British winter conditions and summer alpine conditions and prior to having these boots I have or had and still have got a pair of uh, Scarpa Terra leather boots and Scarpa Active SL boots which are the more winter oriented uh, boots so the question really was what, what, why did I want to buy these boots and the reason behind that really was weight. The Scarpa Active SL boots are quite heavy. They weigh something like 1750 grams for a pair in my size, which is size 44. They're very good for uh, typical British winter conditions they can take uh, strap-on C1 type crampons. Um, so they're, they're a pretty chunky uh, boot, but they're a little bit heavy for, for summertime conditions. The Scarpa Terra boots are three season boots that are intended for kind of decent paths at the end of the day or decent trails. I do wear them on rougher terrain but what I find is uh, uh, over a say four hour period you start to feel all the stones and stuff coming up uh, you, you feel them under your feet so they're, they're kind of not perfect for for rougher conditions but they're very good for um, kind of south downs type walks really um, and they're very light they're I'll put the exact weight up on the screen but I think they're about 1300 and 50 grams something like that so they're quite a lot lighter than the the SL active boots and I was finding the SL actives a bit heavy so I was at a product launch uh, and I came across these boots on the Scarpa stand and they're very light it's something like 1450 grams for for these boots so they're actually much closer to the Scarpa Terrors than they are to the um, SL Active boots and can cope with similar conditions. So that kind of tempted me. They were quite expensive, I think. Now, nowadays they retail between um, something like 280 to 320 pound, depending on, on where you look. So they, they are expensive boots, but they've got the potential to be a, a kind of virtually a do-it-all boot. And it's this do-it-all capability that I'm looking at today. So in terms of stiffness, these boots are theoretically rated as B2 boots. Um, in reality, they're probably closer to sort of B1.5 boots because they have got a little bit of flex in the... Um, in the sole and in terms of crampon suitability uh, they've got the cut out here in the heel that enables you to use semi-automatic crampons 
as well as the normal kind of strap-on type crampon. Um, the Scarpa literature that I was given by Scarpa recommend the use of the um, Gravel AirTech pneumatic semi-automatic crampons that fit really well on this boot. Um, uh, those were the ones that I bought really for, for using with this boot. And um, yeah, they're very simple to, to fit and the semi-automatic nature with the, the cutout in the heel uh, makes them very secure on your, your feet. Once you've got them on, they're, they're not coming off anywhere. Um, I have heard of people who've used normal uh, like Gravel G12 uh, semi-automatic crampons on these boots, but theoretically they'd be a little bit too stiff. So I prefer to err on the, the, the side of caution on that front. Um, the slight flex in the sole makes the boots that little bit more comfortable to walk when you're walking normally. And the other thing that helps enormously with the, the use of these boots for normal, i.e. non-crampon related walking, is the upturn here where the toe box is, that creates a kind of rolling motion, which means despite the um, comparatively stiff sole, you've got a, a, a more normal walking gait. And I found this works very, very well. Uh, the only time that I find the boots a bit too stiff is times when I'm walking along road sections. That, that feels a, a little bit weird. And I guess if you were trying to walk 10 miles on a road, you might find them a bit uncomfortable. But um, that's not the idea with these boots. For, for me, road sections are beginning and ends of, of walks rather than the, the walk itself. So in terms of um, general comfort, the, the longest I've worn these boots, I guess probably about eight hours, and they've um, proven to be extremely comfortable. The heel, section at the back here seems to be quite narrow so what it does is it, it really grips your heel quite tightly and I found that you, you don't end up with any um, any heel slip on the back here. The toe box also appears to be fairly deep so you seem to have quite a lot of space for your, your toes at this end of the boot. Um, I haven't got wide feet so I can't comment too much about the the width at this sort of point here. Um, looking at various bods on the internet, what they reckon is that if you have got wide feet, you might find these a little bit narrow. But for um, people with slightly wide to narrow feet, would would probably find these fit okay. Uh, the insole is allegedly a Scarpa Comfort insole and it's actually fairly basic compared to you know, a lot of the good aftermarket insoles that you can buy. Um, see, it's been perfectly okay for me, but I don't particularly need loads of arch support or cushioning or anything like that. Um, and it's one thing perhaps that it might be worth upgrading if you have got particular needs for your feet um, but you can then customize it with, with different levels of arch support and different levels of cushioning to suit what you want for I won't say cheap because these things usually start around 20 pound but not a lot of money in the the context of the the price of the boots so yeah, all day walking is perfectly good. And I think if I was going on uh, a trek somewhere, I'd be perfectly happy wearing these boots in, in those conditions. So if you are really um, looking at these boots as a kind of, of do it all boot, almost see if you could get away with one boot across the board, uh, we really need to look at how the boot performs in, in each of the seasons. And starting off in winter time, uh, 
I've used them both with micro spikes and the um, Gravel Air Tech crampons. Uh, with micro spikes, they work really, really well. Um, I've had a couple of walks out with them in, in the Brecon Beacons using spikes and also uh, the Lake District. And yeah, they're so, so easy to fit onto these boots, provided you get the right size of micro spike, obviously. Um, and they, they make a massive difference to your ability to walk on, on iced up paths, even icy pavements. If you're walking around town, I was in Ambleside a few weeks ago and the whole place was a skating rink. And um, just walk into the pub in the evening, I put these on with some micro spikes on and, and they were great. Um, but certainly where I've used them, say in the Brecon Beacons with, um, with micro spikes, they've been fantastic. In slightly more uh, arduous conditions where I've had to use crampons, um, like I say, the Gravel Airtex, they seem to fit these boots perfectly. And the semi-automatic version of them is astoundingly easy and quick to, to fit to these boots. Um, and they feel fairly comfy. Uh, there's nothing sort of pressing through the the boot. The straps don't press down on your foot or anything like that. So um, yeah, they're again pretty perfect for that kind of thing. In terms of warmth, I think the coldest I've had them was in an ambient temperature of around minus seven or so, and my feet were quite warm in those conditions, or I should say I didn't really notice, so I, they weren't warm and they, they weren't cold. And that's typically wearing a pair of uh, heavyweight Bridgedale socks along with a, a, a pair of liner socks. My suspicion is that if you were to use them all day in the worst Scottish conditions, you might find that they're, they're not quite warm enough. And um, although they're marketed as being good for summer alpine conditions, I'm not quite sure whether they'd be warm enough to go up Mont Blanc, for example. Uh, for British conditions in winter, the kind of benchmark boot is the Scarpa Manta boot, which has more insulation in it, so it was a better bet for cold British temperatures. The trouble is the Scarpa Manta boot is astoundingly heavy. It's cracking on towards two kilos and so stiff that you can't actually use it for any other times of, of the year, really. It's not suited at all to walking around in, in the spring. Um, so you couldn't use that as a, as a do-it-all boot. Um, so yeah, so with the warmth, there's a, a, a little bit of a question mark on it, depending on how cold the conditions are that you're likely to be in. Like I say, I've been typically the lowest minus seven and had no problems. Um, so they've certainly suited me uh, in, in that respect. In um, typical spring and autumn type conditions, the boots have been great. Um, no crampons on, just being used as a pair of um, slightly roughy tufty walking boots. And what I've found is that if you're out for more than, say, three hours, four hours certainly, the um, stiffness of the sole seems to be quite a good thing. If the path is a little bit rough, uh, you don't get any fatigue caused by feeling the ground underneath you, uh, under the, the soles of your feet. Um, the other thing, the ankle support comes up quite high and um, I find that really good. It's, um, it, it just makes your foot feel very secure in the boot. Typically, if you're out for a long day and you start getting tired, uh, my foot placement starts to go down the pan. I'm not really paying attention. And so having the, the high ankle support um, is a is a nice bit of security for me. It means that I don't have to worry too much about turning my ankle over. 
So yeah, for um, spring and autumn conditions, the, these are pretty perfect boots, certainly for fell and, and mountain walking. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go on the the, the, the South Downs with these. Um, that's often where where I press my uh, terrors into service or my um, SL Active boots get used on the Downs quite a lot as well. Now in uh, summertime, I've used them up to temperatures of about 20 degrees and they're okay in, in that sort of temperature. If it was much hotter than that, I think your feet would get too hot. Um, but what I found, I, I walked the fan dance in the uh, Brecon Beacons in these in August last year. And the valley temperature was like 18 to 20 and the temperature on the tops was about 12, if I remember rightly. And that's a pretty long walk. And when I got to the end, like seven, eight hours later, and took my boots off, my socks were uh, pretty sweaty. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually feel the, the 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 wetness of the sock. I think that was the the, the um, liner and the sock itself having really good wicking ability. But certainly my uh, my, my socks were were fairly wet. And uh, in that instance, I think I was using Bridgedale socks again, but they were the the, the lighter version. So these probably aren't ideally suited to the, um, the, the warmest temperatures uh, and for me say 20 degrees is, is about the most I, I would use these for. Um, but they were, they were actually ideal boots for walking the fan dance because the, um, they protected my feet from the stones and, and rocks and protected my ankles when I got tired. So uh, it, they were actually the right boot choice for that walk. Um, even though my feet got got a little bit sweaty. So yeah, being marketed as a kind of little bit of a do-it-all boot, I think is probably fair enough um, of Scarpa. I've certainly found that, that they do that. And um, after I first, first put them on on that first walk that I did, I was like super chuffed with um, how comfortable they were. And I still feel that way today there's really nothing that I can gripe about them at all so I, I'm very pleased with them I don't do scrambling apparently they're they're quite good for scrambling and um, they're quite good for via ferrata as well if anybody's gonna trot off to um, to the dolomites and do some of that um so yeah the only things I'd say in in my view they're probably not great for is uh, much colder conditions than I would typically be out in maybe minus 10 and, and below um, and that's about it really so uh, yeah in, they're expensive boots I think you probably can pretty well get away with buy these boots and they'll do everything for you um, if you only want to buy one pair of boots if you can afford two I would get a lightweight pair of boots for trogging round in in the heat of the summer and then use these for um, all other conditions. So there we are, I can um, heartily recommend them. I mean, the thing with boots is it's very much an individual thing according to your feet. Um, I've found through trial and error that Scarpa happens to fit my feet really well. Hence me ending up with you know three pairs of, of Scarpas. But um, if they fit your feet, I reckon they're cracking boots, um, albeit they are a bit expensive, I must say, but worth it if you only need one pair. So, um, yeah, there you are. That's my kind of two year thoughts on these. Um, I hope if somebody's considering buying these boots, they find that little overview useful, along with the more techie talk that I put up earlier. Oh, the, the only thing that I haven't mentioned so far is actually waterproofness. And the main reason I haven't really mentioned it, it's not on my radar because I haven't had any problems with it. I do periodically test them out by standing in a stream just to see that, um, that they are waterproof. But um, yeah, I've had no issues with them at all. So uh, yeah, on that note, I shall uh, bid you cheerio. Take care and see you again next time.